and it came to a, came to a complete stop. It's stalking you. <laughs> okay. That's hilarious. Okay, it actually stopped. <laughs> Two successful tests. Okay, that one actually. They really got radar right in this release. Yeah, that, that one actually was uh, quite a speaker monitoring moment there. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so did it tell you anything on the display? You know what? I was paying more attention to you. Okay. But even when you were standing in front of me, I did not see anything on my screen. All right. It just, it, and you know what? I didn't even get collision warning. Okay. It just slowed me down, like as if there's another car coming up in front of me. Okay. Interesting. Uh, this, go, this does coincide with the radar enhancements they were saying. the brake. Huh? After it stopped, I touched the brake, so oh. I lost TACC. Okay. Never mind then. Yeah, so what did it come up with? It didn't show, it doesn't show anything on the screen. So it looks as if you were just driving normally, there's no lights not coming on or anything else. It, it looks like as if I came up behind another vehicle and it was just slowing down to a stop. Actually, it did, uh, but in the interest of safety, I helped it. Okay. Um, the car actually gave me a collision alert, All right. and it also applied the brakes, but I also, just in interest of not killing one of my friends, I, I also, once the car hit the brakes, I also slammed on the brakes. Coming successful. Successful test. It actually slowed down earlier that time, but no warning. Okay. I think it's only doing the warning now when you're standing walking across. Okay. It's detecting a new object coming onto the road. Oh. Maybe. That's the way it looks. And it started slowing it down at about twice the distance this time. Okay. I actually did 35. Well, this test, unlike our first test that we did at the beginning of the summer where uh, we didn't have things quite planned out as well, it was a, more, a little more spur of the moment, but um, the tests we did do at the beginning of the summer under the uh, Firmware 7 uh, flavors um, pretty much showed that pedestrian detection was a fail. Uh, obviously, it did detect Mike when we did the summons earlier in the summer, 
but it didn't do it on autopilot or on uh, track for, for cruise control. But it looks like this time... Oh, boy, I should have mentioned, I don't mean to interrupt go, you, that the, the first time we did it um, way back a couple months ago, it actually alerted you, but this time it didn't, it, it except did. on one test. Well, it, uh, it did, uh, when we did it earlier in the summer, uh, we did it, uh, the top speed we did it at was 18 uh, for safety, um, uh, to be safer. Uh, but uh, it ever, uh, I think both times it did alert us that uh, there was going to be a collision, eh, 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 you know, whatever. Uh, this time, however, um, it didn't do the audible alert until we were at 25 miles an hour or faster. We did um, 20 mile an hour tests, we did 20, a couple 25s, and a 30 and a 35 mile an hour test. And uh, only on the faster ones, uh, did it actually give us the audible alert? He gave it a couple times, but it also didn't give the audible alert when he was already in the road. Only when Mike actually walked out. So it was more of the car wanted to alert us when something new was detected entering our, our driving path, not when there was something there already. When there was something there already, uh, it just slowed down as if there was just any old object on the road and uh, decided to come to a complete stop, um, and then once Mike was out of the way, it actually resumed its merry old way as if nothing had happened. Um, I was a little surprised that it didn't give us the audible warnings, um, especially considering that the car could not, or and would not display anything on the screen. Uh, I don't know how, I don't know how to word it, I'm brain farting for a quick second here, but um, since nothing was displayed on the screen, uh, not even a pedestrian or a motorcycle or anything. Um, now, I have come up behind bicyclists on their bike, and then it has displayed that on the screen. Uh, now, prior to firmware 8, um, I had a incident where my, uh, de my um, the autopilot camera was not properly functioning. Actually, I've had on two occasions. Now, this was under firmware seven, um, since I actually haven't had, I haven't driven my car very much since getting eight yet. Uh, one in, one in instance, my autopilot camera had some problems, and even though it was just the autopilot camera going out, uh, the car would not function at all for collision alerts, anything using just the radar. Likewise, previously this summer at the end of June. Uh, 2016, uh, my radar went out, and the car couldn't function with the on, on, with the autopilot or anything using the camera alone. Apparently, once the car could, couldn't physically see an object, it wasn't tracking it. So, what do you think? Do you think maybe uh, with all of Elon's improvements to the radar, using that more as a primary source probably is why or it's able to, to detect detect more. Sure hope so, right? I sure hope so. Yeah, whatever makes me not die. <laughs> no kidding. But. And uh, that was probably, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I gotta say it, I, firm, I firmly hate firmware 8 with a passion. Um, it was very rushed, but uh, apparently there were some improvements on there, and this is one that I really give them a thumbs up on. Um, the, the, the autopilot itself has been hit or miss uh, since firmware 8. Um, there's been a lot of improvements and there's been a lot of bugs. That's a completely separate video. I've already touched on all of them. Uh, but uh, the enhancements that they have done with the, the radar is, remember, this isn't Autopilot 2.0. Autopilot 2.0 is the autopilot coming out with the new autonomous hardware before full autonomy software is released. Doesn't that also have two cameras in there? Three. Oh, wow. Three on the front, on the side markers. Oh, that's right. There's in the glass. Don't worry, I'm working on making arrangements to see one of those. Well, wasn't there also like two, instead three. of one, there's two. Oh, wow. Three, 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 Long two. range, short range, and wide oh, angle. I didn't even know that. Oh, yeah. Uh, but um, anyways, back to the radar, because the new autopilot, the aut autonomous cars are using the same radar enhancement that the autopilot cars are. And due to the software processing that they've apparently worked out with Bosch, who is the supplier of the radar equipment, uh, has increased the, the number of objects the radar can track by 30 fold. Now, prior, I could visually, now we don't know exactly how many 
the car is detecting at any one point without having some sort of backdoor access. So it looks like I might have to give Jason Hughes a call. <laughs> uh, he's the one that hacked his Model S and uh, also upgraded his wife's car from a classic to an autopilot car. Uh, was very detailed. Uh, but at least visually, I have noticed previously on Firmware 7 that the car was able to display five separate vehicles on the road at one time. I saw a, motor, a couple motorcycles uh, and three cars at the same time. So that shows me the car was able to detect, place, and track five objects. So at the very least, if it was a 30-fold increase, that means at the very least the car should be able to track 30 objects now, right? I hope so. And then with their radar trickery of what I call X-ray radar, it's also able to see around objects or underneath other vehicles to see an uh, extra car length in front of it, uh, in front of you. Um, so it looks like all these enhancements together have somehow improved autopilot uh, or uh, the radar detection enough where it can now detect a human. I'm really, really glad for that. What are your thoughts on if Tesla not doing that originally? Like, because for the first test we did a couple of months ago, the car alerted you, but it didn't do, make any effort whatsoever to stop. Um, so or to avoid I was, collision, but all of a sudden now the update. Apparently, made. somehow the car could detect you, but maybe not with enough assurance to make a decision. Uh, so I think maybe back then um, it was programmed like that to do the alert because you should be paying attention with your hands on the wheel anyways. Of course. Of course. Um, and I think it was like that, an effort to cut down on false positives. Uh, I think it was, what, about midsummer was when Elon did the tweet saying that he was working with the Bosch um, and his team was working with Bosch to see what kind of enhancements they could do software-wise in signal, you know, processing of the, of the radar being used and uh, without having to change the hardware at all, and this is where Tesla vehicles really shine, is without changing the hardware at all, they were able to do a very, very significant update to the autopilot system and the radar processing to be able to detect more objects. And it's been very impressive on what it's been able to detect, especially in stop and go driving, uh, detecting uh, maybe the person in front of you is not paying attention and they forget to hit the brakes well and they smash into the car in front of them. Well, if your car is following the person in front of you, previously you'd end up maybe getting too close and almost hitting the car in front of you. Well, this way, the radar can bounce underneath those vehicles and detect, oh, okay, well, two cars ahead of me, they're already slamming on their brakes. Well, maybe I should slow down to a safe safe speed just in case. And a safe following distance. And a safer following distance. So. And speaking of, when you were talking about how they, without actually changing hardware in the vehicle, they just did simple firmware uh, program or update and all that stuff. I wouldn't say simple, but... Uh, or, well, uh, uh, I guess it instead was, of ripping the car up yeah. and changing things, they made a, a firmware update to do, obviously, now it detects, well, not well, it always detected me, but now it actually makes an effort. Yeah. I wonder, because your, you know, your video with half a million views of trying to run into me, uh, I wonder <laughs> if uh, some people up high up at Tesla saw that and they probably used your video and possibly and yours. mine. I mean, we, we both we both did it from different viewpoints. Yeah, so I wonder if they took our videos and says, um, yeah, we need to we gotta fix that. Fix that. Because uh, I think what was it, uh, Volkswagen already had pedestrian detection, was it? No, uh, Volvo. Yeah, I think so. Volvo. I think it was Volvo. So yeah, uh, uh, that'd be awesome if they if they did. Um, if they did, um, they've done some really significant improvements. And I'm hoping um, now Elon has already mentioned that existing autopilot cars, it's not feasible, of course, just like the classic cars. It is possible, but not feasible cost-wise. Uh, how did Elon put it? The cost delta is too high to upgrade an autopilot car to one of the autonomous hardware cars. However, uh, with all this extra processing, now even though there's no uh, additional cameras on these cars, uh, maybe um, one of the big changes they made also was the sonar on the autonomous cars, which is the hardware currently being produced for all the Tesla vehicles, both S, X, and 3. I should have said X, 3, and S. All right. Yeah. Oh, you know what I'm trying to say. Oh, yeah. uh, now, the sonar on those cars actually has a distance, uh, uh, 
approximately twice as much as the autopilot cars. So when we were doing our summons test, it started steering around Mike approximately four feet from him. That is the approximate limitation of the existing sonar. Um, maybe it's possible just by popping out the little sonar pucks, they might actually be able to give us the eight foot distance as an upgrade option down the line. And then just a software update to maybe improve that enough where it might be able to navigate uh, better on driveways, close quarters, uh, maybe even parking lots a little bit to give that uh, automatic parking feature that uh, Elon talked about way back in the original release old press release event for the, the, uh, the dual motor cars and autopilot event. So that's just a thought. And uh, that would actually be something pretty easy to do. The existing wiring would be able to remain the same. You're just replacing uh, to a, a sonar puck that has greater sensitivity and higher transmit power for that ultrasonic ping. And I would agree with that because you would think because if it's just you know a sensor, you know obviously it would have a set cost per Tesla for customers and yep. stuff like that. But I mean, I remember correct me if I'm wrong. At one point, uh, well even still, uh, older Model S's with just a tech package before they didn't have like parking sensors, and then they added that and it was a $500 option. Yep. Uh, they were able to retrofit that. Now of course it's it was, uh, option I was just about to say it does cost more than five uh, five hundred dollars. But there was, was no wiring in place for those, and you needed new bumpers, um, and they had to fish wiring through the frame. Right. And, and yeah, they actually they, had they to change out they had to change out the center unit for it too. It was so they, not compatible. Yeah, they did uh, quite a lot of changes, but so you, you would think if they were able to do that, the, they can change a simple the simple sensor. The cost the change solar. for the autonomous cars, the big cost, is the cameras because of the additional cameras. There's still the twelve sonar, the one radar in the front, but now they have cameras in the side markers. There's cameras up here. I don't even know if you guys can, yeah, you can see me. There's cameras up here, there's three in the front, you got some in the back, you got them all around the car. And on top of that, they're now using NVIDIA's uh, new, uh, what is it, AI2 or something? I, I can't remember the exact serial or code, code name for it, uh, but they're using NVIDIA's new uh, processing for artificial or autonomous driving. And uh, pro pro uh, apparently it has 40 times the computing power of the existing Tegra 3 systems that are in the cars right now. Now, there is no uh, center console or computer change between the Classic and the Autopilot cars. They're actually using the same processing power as the Classic cars. Uh, the only thing they really did change was uh, increase the resolution of the dash screen. So that's why I think it might be a potential Old classic Mercedes Benz. Oh, loud too. <laughs> um, that's why I think potentially just replacing some sonar pucks might be able to add a, a more functionality, or at the very least, maybe just a little more safety. Yeah. That'd be something I'd maybe spring for a couple hundred dollars just to replace some sonar pucks and a firmware update. I'll bet you a bunch of Tesla owners will be all over that, especially because. Yep. Yep. Why not? Darn right. So I guess uh, I guess we're, that's our that concludes our test for today. Until we figure out the next way to try and kill Mike. I just gotta go change my pants real quick. Yeah. Oh. And at least we didn't have to commit vehicular manslaughter today. Oh yeah. At least this time. The hole's already dug in the backyard. <laughs> so I guess I'll decamerify my car. You can change your undies. And uh, let's call it a day and grab a beer. Oh yeah. We should have did the beer first. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe would have eased the tension a little bit. Yeah. No kidding. Smile, cheese.